Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this morning's Pilates Course Taster. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Sarah Todd, and I am the owner and director of Unite Health, and I am so delighted to be running this session um, this morning with one of our phenomenal educators based in Sydney, Riley, um, who's going to take you through a bit of a sneak peek of what it's like on our Pilates course with us. So unfortunately, as it is a webinar, we can't see everyone's beautiful faces. So we do encourage you, if you have any questions over the next 45 minutes, to pop them in the chat box and I'll make sure I answer them at the end. Um, we do want you to get moving in today's session as well. So we're going to start off with a bit of a mat work class. We're going to break down some of the exercises you would learn on the course. And then I'm going to give you a bit of an overview of the course structure everything you need to know about the course, basically. Um, and then please stay on to the end of the session as we do have a little bit of a, a promotion to share with you. Um, so firstly, I want to say thank you so much for giving up your time this morning to join us. Um, we are very passionate about Pilates. I love, love Pilates. Um, and we love sharing this with everyone else. So if you've been thinking about becoming a Pilates instructor or if you're just in that kind of stage in your life where it's like, I want to do something that I really enjoy, you are definitely in the right place. Um, we've seen so many students just transform their lives to just teaching Pilates part-time, to teaching full-time, to setting up their own businesses. And it is just such an amazing career opportunity. The industry is just booming. There is so much work. And I think, yeah, Riley will be able to testify for that. There is just studios opening everywhere and they're looking for really good instructors. And the, the benefit of our course is you are industry ready. We do so much on the course practice that enables you to really just walk straight out into a uh, a job. So just to give you a bit of background, I am a Pilates instructor. I'm obsessed with Pilates. I'm obsessed with education and business. So I'm delighted to have owned or been started Unite Health over 13 years ago now. And we've just seen so many people transform their lives. And I think that's my biggest joy is just seeing people become Pilates instructors and just love what they do. I think my kind of biggest priority in life is you spend the majority of your day, your life working, why not enjoy it? So super, super excited to um, run this session tonight. For those that have just joined us, just a reminder, unfortunately, we can't see everyone today, but do pop any questions you have into the chat box and I'll make sure I get to them at the end of the session. So without further ado, I'm going to pass over to Riley. She is phenomenal. She's one of our educators in Sydney. She runs both face-to-face -face courses. She runs our online courses as well. Um, so I will pass you over to Riley to kick off today's session. Hey, Riley. Hello. Thank you. Um, welcome, everyone. This is very exciting to be here. As Sarah said, I am in Sydney. Um, quick little background about myself. I am an APA um, titled sports and exercise physio. So I started my education right back in New Zealand, um, back home doing my undergrad and then moved to Melbourne, was there for almost 10 years, did my master's there in sport and exercise. And my physio career has kind of taken me a little bit all over in regards to corporate industry, private practice, um, into big elite settings like Carlton Football Club for a few years where I was head of medical. And the greatest thing about Pilates is it's kind of come along with me the whole way. And so I think as Sarah was saying, there is so much opportunity in Pilates. I love it. I'm also obsessed with it. I think it's one of the most incredible forms of exercise, but from a physio perspective, I use it every single day. And in every one of my jobs, it's come along with me, like I was saying. So pre and postnatal, big fitness classes, elite athlete rehabilitation, recovery sessions. Um, and now I'm an educator in this space as well. So um, if you kind of don't know where you want the journey to leave, lead you but you just love it I think you just find yourself along the way and there's so many opportunities not only in Australia but worldwide and it can change at any given moment so um it's a really exciting space and it's just getting bigger and bigger I'm noticing in Sydney it's growing at a whole nother level I think Melbourne was a little bit ahead of the the times and so it's really exciting to be here in Sydney and and trying to push APPI um into the space I think 
Um, one thing I'd say about our course that I really love, especially from a physio point of view, is our attention to quality. And hopefully what I can show you um, in my little practical session is about how we break down exercises so that you really have an innate understanding of movement and control and the body. And I think that's probably a big thing that sets us apart from other institutions. I think we really try to give you the education and teach you how to see someone move at a really, I guess, basic beginner level and then be able to move them and modify them through to an advanced level. And so um, we're going to show you today how we kind of bring all our exercises into a little form of, I guess, a mat work class that you might be quite familiar with um, the layout and how that dynamic flow goes, but then also how we teach on the course and we break down exercise so you can understand the quality of movement that's necessary, what is required to do each movement, and then again, how you can move those through the levels. I, I think that's so true, Riley, isn't it? Where it's like, we we teach you to teach movement and we are so passionate about providing everyone with the, the tools and the skill set to feel really confident to be able to, you don't have to go do another course after you've done our course. It's like we are going to teach you on the course how to teach Pilates and then feel really confident because you do go through this beautiful learning curve from day one to day 14 where you're learning Pilates to then all of a sudden at the end of the course, you teach your group classes, you're able to teach one-on-one -on -one, um, and people do get, often get a little bit nervous about that, but we provide such a supportive environment throughout that. So you really get that confidence in that beautiful supportive environment. So we are very dedicated to quality <laughs> is our biggest thing. Um, we want we want you to feel good. We want you to walk out being really ready, really confident um, and no Pilates. So we are very passionate. If you, if you <laughs> And that's what we just say. If you're passionate about Pilates, you are in the right place. Like we're going to teach you everything you need to know. We just, if you love Pilates, you're here. Yeah. I love that. Um, okay. So we're good to get going. So yes. please feel free to move with me. Obviously I can't see all your beautiful faces, but um, you know, it's a really nice time for you to take 15 minutes or so for yourself and um, and just kind of feel some movement this morning. I think it's nice for everyone to start their day like that. Um, you don't need any specific equipment, but um, you might find, I'm just going to use a rolled up towel just for a little bit of head support. You don't need it, but if you like to have that kind of support under your head, please just grab a cushion or something that you've got. Um, what I will say is obviously we're doing a mat work, but this we do this exact same I guess, um, process on the reformer. So we teach you, it's the same system. So if you, if you love reformer and you're all about reformer, um, we apply exactly the same principles into our reformer module as well. Um, so we're going to get started. Um, I'll probably just move my screen up and down just a little bit so you can see my, my head doesn't get completely cut off. Um, feel free to move around your mat. Feel free to take moments um, of a break. Um, please listen to your own bodies and how you're feeling this morning. It's probably more an intermediate based class. I've just tried to add a few different um, exercises in there. So just take what you feel is good for you and leave what you, you know you want behind. Um, so if you are ready to move, we're going to come and stand at the top end of your mat. Um, I'll just lift my screen up slightly. So bear with me for one second while you all get yourselves ready as well. Okay. So you won't be able to see my mat, but I just want you to be able to, I guess, see my head to begin with. So we're going to start just standing and in a really nice, comfortable position. I'm just going to see if I can brighten my screen slightly. Sorry, guys. Um, what I want you to first do, if you like to close down your eyes, feel free to do that at any time. And if you, that doesn't feel good for you, you can keep your eyes open. But now would be a time to just settle into your bodies. And maybe you feel, first of all, how the feet are pressing down into the floor. So big toe, little toe and heel, even pressure down through the feet. We're nice and long through the spine. And to stack our spine, I want you to think about your pelvis and gently bring your pelvis slightly forward or back, depending on where you naturally stand. So it's sitting over your heels. And then let's stack our rib cage over our pelvis. And you might find that you're someone that generally stands slightly forward or maybe a little bit further back. So we're just finding that neutral position to lengthen our spine. Arms are long down by our sides. And imagine you have a helium balloon attached to the top of your head and it's reaching your head and neck towards the ceiling. So we're creating length from the tailbone all the way to the crown of the head. 
As I see the arms are relaxed down by your sides and we're just focusing into our bodies. Let's now bring a bit of attention to our breath. If you like a little bit of to feel the breath, a little bit of feedback, feel free to take your hands to the outer sides of your rib cage. And just notice your breath enter in and out of the body. I encourage you to try and breathe in and out through your nose. And nothing too forced. Keep your breath silent. Notice as you breathe in, the rib cage expands out to the sides. And see if you can feel a pressure into your back, as if you're breathing into your back. And then as you breathe out, your ribs recoil and draw back in nice and slowly, nothing too forced. Let's take five more breaths here. If you like to visualize, thinking of a gold band wrapped around that rib cage and that gold band starts to spread apart slightly on your breath in and then recoils and tightens slightly as you draw that breath out. Two more breaths. The breath is a really beautiful way to just bring awareness into your body. Present in the moment and starting to just think about your physical body as well as your awareness of your body. Release the arms if they're at your rib cage and allow your breath just to return to a normal rhythm. But at any point you feel like you want to come back to the breath, think about the breath leading into the base of your rib cage, into your sides, your back and your front all equally. From here, we're going to go into a little warm up. So what I want you to think about is we're going to reach our arms up towards the ceiling and into our upper body reach to just warm up the shoulders and our mid back. So you won't be able to see my fingers, but they're just pointing towards the ceiling. And from here, I want you to reach your right arm up a little bit further. And if it's okay for you, look towards your fingers. What we're trying to do is spread apart the ribs on that right hand side. And then as that right shoulder relaxes back down to the starting position, we're going up into your left side. And again, looking towards your fingers, spreading apart the rib cage. And remember, it is just a little warm up, so it's nothing too hectic, nothing too forced. And we're just going to do two more each side. Right side re reaches, right side releases, and move to the left. So there's a little side bend slightly as we're spreading apart from the rib cage all the way down to the pelvis. Last one each side. Right side reach. Relax and left side reach. Nice. Let's bring the arms back down by your sides. Interlace your fingers. We're going to now warm up with our upper body, uh, our upper back warm up. And I want you from here to turn the palms down towards the floor. Now I want you to tuck the chin very slightly as if you can look to the floor and the upper back can round. So if I'm on my standing side on, just so you can see how much I'm rounding, it's not very much. We're not going all the way down. It's just the upper back. We look down. And then we reach our arms forward and let your eye gaze follow your hands as the arms come up over your head towards the side of your ears. And we lift our upper back to reach up and get a nice little stretch. Reach the arms out wide, arms come back down by your sides. Hands come in front, interlace the fingers, palms press to the floor. Look down, round through the upper back. Reach down forward, spread those shoulder blades apart. Look, let the eye gaze follow. Head and neck start to follow. Look up to the ceiling. Reach the arms up. Keep long through the spine. Reach the arms out nice and wide. Let's do one more. Hands together. Press the arms down. Press the arms out in front, round. Let the eye gaze follow. Look all the way up and reach the arms out wide. It's just nice to open up our back a little bit. Often if we're sitting at computers, we get a little bit tight. We're gonna find, if you're still there at the front of your mat, I'm just gonna change my screen very slightly and we're gonna go into a roll down. We'll get this show started. So standing nice and tall at the end of your mat, from here, tuck the chin slightly, look down towards your toes, hands are draped down in front of you. So you can see my arms dangling. From here, I want you to scoop the belly in slightly. Nothing too forced, but we're trying not to let our hips go back behind us. I want us to round through the spine as if you're a piece of old wallpaper paper dripping off the wall. Let the head go heavy like a heavy bowling ball. 
and come down all the way to the floor. If you want to bend your knees slightly and take any pressure out of the legs or the back, please feel free to do that. Look after your bodies. Hang at the bottom for a second. Keep weight even through the legs and the feet. Scoop the belly, start to roll all the way back up. Nice and slow and controlled. We're just going to do one more like this. You can open the shoulders at the top. Start to tuck the chin slightly, look down towards the floor, just towards your big toes, and start to roll off your shoulder blades. Roll over your pelvis. Let everything start to dangle and get pulled towards the floor, nice and slow and heavy. And maybe we just hang here for a second at the bottom. If you like to, grab interlace your hands around your opposite elbows. And again, let the head fall heavy towards the floor and you can add some movement in whatever feels good. It might be a sway from side to side or a bend of one knee, whatever feels good for you. Then from here, bend the knees a bit more. Let the hands come to the floor. So bend your knees as much as you need to to find your hands flat down on the ground and just walking gently, slow and controlled out to a plank. Once we get to a plank, if it's too much for you, you always find your knees. We're going to hold here for one second, and then we're going to gently come down knees to floor. Untuck your toes. Have your hands just slightly forward of your shoulders. And from here, start to move into a cat-cow. Let's move the rest of the spine. Slight tuck of the chin. Round through the upper back, like a little Mexican wave through your spine. Scoop the belly round, tuck under. Press the tailbone back behind you, drop the belly. Dig into your heels of your hands and pull your chest forward, look forward. Feel the opening through the front of the chest. From here, tuck the chin. Round the upper back. Scoop the belly, tuck the tailbone. One more, nice and slow. Lower pelvis starts to drop. Tailbone goes behind you. Rib cage opens, chest forward. Find that neutral spine, so we want length in the spine. We want to keep that nice length the whole time here. We're going to start adding in a little bit of control work. So from here, push through the arms so we keep nice and open through the shoulder blades. We're going into our swimming level four. Slide your left leg out nice and long, and at the same time, if it's comfortable for you, reach your right arm forward. Hover that left leg, hold. We'll do this first one slow so you get the idea. Try not to rotate that open hip. So think about the pelvis rolling towards the floor. And then draw the arm and the knee back down towards the floor. We're going to change sides. So there's a bit of a challenge in between. What we want to think about is not dropping as we transition. So keep the length. Now from here, we transition to the other side. Right leg extends out. Left arm reaches forward. Everything comes up. Keep the right hip rolled down. Long through the spine, coming back down. Eye gaze is just slightly forward of your fingers. We'll pick up the pace just a little bit, but keep the control. Right arm, left leg, reach. Come back through, maintain control, left side. All the way up. Draw all the way back in. All the way up. All the way back in. Last time on your left side, reach that left arm, right leg, leg reaches, hold, and come back down. Nice. Take any time that you need to to shake out those wrists. I know sometimes it's a bit uncomfortable to start the day. So from here, tuck your toes. We're going into our leg um, prep. So leg pull in prone prep level one and two. Long name, great exercise. Knees under hips, hands slightly forward of the shoulders, just to give us a bit of room around our shoulder blades. Find our neutral spine. May need a slight little hug of the belly if you're feeling like you don't have as much control. And from here, keeping the spine length, hover your knees just a couple of inches off the ground. Lower back down. Breathe out, lift the knees. Breathe in lower. Breathe out, lift. Breathe in lower. Start to focus what's happening on the upper back. Try not to sink your shoulders or your chest towards the floor. Keep strong in the upper body just as much as the lower. One more. And then lower. Quick rinse out of the wrist. We'll go straight into level two. From here, step your hands another hand width forward. So it's quite far forward. From this position, keep that control exactly how we were. Toes are tucked. We still do the hover. So it's a little bit harder because the arms are forward. Hover the knees. Press out, find plank. Hold. 
lengthen. Draw the knees back to your hover, lower down. We're now going to do six of these without the whole, uh, the lo lowering down. So we're going to bring a little bit of heat into our tummies. From here, hover your knees, press to plank, come back to a hover. Press to plank, back to a hover. Four to go. One, keep breathing. Two, three, four. Last one, hold here. If you need to go to knees, feel free to. Otherwise, take about three seconds to lower to your bellies. One, two, three, shake it out. So we move into a little bit of work on our tummies, which is really nice for our mid-back. Good for posture, good to start to strengthen, the, strengthen those muscles. We get tight and a little bit fatigued, especially sitting at a computer. From here, I want you to have your forearms on the ground. If you need something to give you a bit of support under your forehead, that rolled up towel comes in handy. You can rest your forehead on the ground. From here, hopefully you can hear me. I'll turn my head towards you. I'll shout at you as well. From here, keep your arms down. Hover your breastbone off the ground so your head and neck follow. So we're not poking our chin forward. If you can see in front of you, then you're, still, you're too far forward with your head. Look to the top of your mat. And then lower down. Breathe out to lift. Breathe in to lower. Swan dive, level one. Nice opening through the back and the chest, starting to bring in those postural muscles against gravity. One more. Really good. Now we're going to add in the arms to make it a level two. So exactly the same movement, but the arms will also lift. Now, Going back down to your pelvis, press your pubic bone down and your lower belly lifts slightly. That will maintain your neutral spine so you don't hang into that forward position through your pelvis. So we want to maintain neutral as we lift up so we don't collapse into our lower back. So pubic bone presses down, lower belly lifts, and then from here, hover the breastbone and the arms up, hold, and then lower down. Lift, check in with the pelvis, and lower down. Lift, and lower. And then last one, lift. Now hold here, shoot the arms, my couch is in the way, shoot the arms all the way forward, and then come back. Keep the lift, keep the pure bone down. Both arms reach out forward for another four, for three, for two, Last one, collapse back down. If you need to take a child's pose at any time for this, for your back, then please feel free to. Otherwise, we're rolling onto our right-hand side. So from here, the towel comes in handy. You might all know the exercise clams. We teach three different variations of clams. There's obviously a million types. So head comes onto your support or your Arm is nice and long out underneath your ear, and that's your support for your head. Whatever suits you, your shoulders and your neck. Bend both knees, and whenever you change positions, we want to find our neutral spine again. So long through the spine, ribcage draws in, knees are bent. From here, if you need support, tent the hand in front of you. Make it a bit more challenging, hand on hip. Keep the feet together, lift the top knee towards the ceiling, lower it back down. This is your level one. We lift up and we lower. Think about that your back is against the wall, so we're not rotating the whole pelvis back. We're thinking about that back pocket muscle to work as we lift this knee up. We keep the rib cage connected. That will help with our abdominal control. So level one should feel pretty straightforward in the way that it might feel quite familiar. So let's do two more. Last one, hold at the top, hover your feet. So they're almost in line with your pelvis. Keep the feet lifted. Watch what's happened to your lower waist. Make sure we haven't sunk into the floor. Keep control. Lower your knee down and lift for one. Keep moving here. Same exercise as in same muscles are working. Same control required. 
a little bit of a harder level with our feet lifted off the ground. Keep moving here. Last one. Hold the top knee. I'm going to keep that little burn in the glute. Drop your bottom leg and straighten it out just slightly in front of you. I'm making a little variation of our side kick level one. Drop this leg so it's now in line with the hip and slide it forward like you're trying to take your knee towards your chest, but keep the knee bend. Keep the knee bend as you try and then take your leg behind you. So I haven't straightened my top leg. I've kept it bent the whole way through. I'm working with control in the side kick around my hip and my pelvis. Really nice for that single leg work. Keep the control here. We've got another four. See if it feels harder to take your leg forward or back. Again, tent the hand in front of you if you need a bit of support and keep the foot, hip and knee all in the same line. Last one, so I definitely have lost count. Slide all the way forward, hook your foot behind your bottom knee and lower that knee down. You'll notice the pelvis rolls forward slightly, that's perfect. And then from here we move into our clam level three. Lift the top knee up and down, one. Two, let's go a little bit faster just to get that last little bit of burn. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Hold at the top. Let's pulse here for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and then come back down, tap it out. Keep your foot hooked and the knee down on the ground. Bring your arms out in front. We're going into, this is a variation of the bottom part of our arm openings level one. Lift the top arm to the ceiling. Keep your top knee down on the ground and rotate all the way back to get that nice opening through your chest. Nice thoracic rotation now, mid back. If you can get your shoulder to the floor while your knee is on the ground, great. If you can't, also great. But look over your shoulder just as far as you can, keeping your nose relatively in line with your breastbone and draw all the way back over. If you have a shoulder injury, feel free to just bring your hand to your chest and rotate through just the chest rather than the arm being outstretched. We're just doing four of these, so we've got two more. If you like the breath pattern, breathe out to open. And let's breathe in to return. You can change the breath pattern with this, which is quite nice because then it can help. Sometimes that breath in helps to expand the rib cage. So breath in to open can also feel really good. Depends on where you want to work. Let's make this in that last one. Open out and just hold that position. Arm might be outstretched or bent in. Keep the arms outstretched. Roll onto your back. Reset yourself onto the mat. Arms are out nice and wide. You don't have to have them at shoulder height, just bring them out wide so that they're comfortable. Bring your feet and knees together as if you're pinning something between your knees. Rotate your knees over to the right. What I want you to notice is your left knee is gonna stay behind. So I want you to push your left knee up and over to try and keep them stacked. But now look at your left shoulder, make sure it's pinned to the floor. Hip twist level two. If it feels comfortable for, you, for your neck, turn your head to look over your left shoulder. Come back to the center, so nose in line with the breastbone, knees back to point to the ceiling. Go to the other side, push the right knee up and over as you rotate towards your left, look over your right shoulder. Gently come back into the center. One more each side. Left leg pushes up and over, look over your left shoulder. Come back to center. Last one to this side. Nice. Nice to open up your lower back a little bit more as well. Come back into the center, feet are hip width apart. From here, we're just going to do a little bit of tummy work before you roll up into a seated position. I want you to slide your right leg in towards your sit bone and then draw it up to tabletop. We're going into our scissors series now and we're going to break this down later. So this is your level three. From here, I want you to take your right foot to the floor and switch so that your left leg comes up to tabletop. So we're gonna alternate here. We wanna keep our control through our pelvis, so find your neutral position and then switch. If you're struggling with your neutral position, the main thing you wanna think about 
is not flattening too far into the floor where you feel like you're bracing and pushing hard. And we don't want an arch where it's not your natural curve. So for your neutral spine, find that relaxed position for your pelvis and try not to lose it throughout the movement. Switch, hold for your breath in, switch for your breath out. Quick little switch, but there's a hold in between. Now we'll quicken the pace for your level four without holding in between. We just keep switching. One, two, keep breathing in and out. See, notice my toes just tapping slightly out of reach so that they're not bending in towards my sit bones. We're going to go here for another five, four, three, two, one. Hold the right leg where it is. Draw your left leg to meet. From here, right leg reaches out long. One leg stretch, level three. Draw back in. The other side, only as low and as far as you can where you don't lose that pelvis position. Keep that control through your pelvis. If it's too much, you just take your leg towards the ceiling or don't go as low. Last one. And then keep your left leg out there or whichever leg you've got out there. Reach your hands to your um, right leg. From here, reach your right leg towards the ceiling. We're going straight into a scissors level five. Abdo prep, lift up really nice and high. Lengthen the left leg out really long. Find that control. Pulse the leg towards your forehead. One, two, switch the legs. If you are quite flexible, reach up to your toes. Switch, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Keep going here for another five. Four, three, two, one. Draw your knees in. <sighs> Take a quick little breather. Hopefully we're starting to get a little bit of heat up into our cardio as well. Reach your arms over your head. You don't need your pillow. I just kind of kept it there, but you don't need that anymore if you don't want it. Arms are over your head. Feet are hip width apart. Press down through your heels. Reach your arms towards the ceiling. Push hard into your heels so that that's going to help you. Rolling all the way up. Sit up nice and tall. Reach your arms over your head. Scoop the belly in. Roll all the way down. Teaser level one. Reach the arms over your head. Last one. Arms to ceiling. Press through your heels. Use your belly. Roll all the way up. Hold at the top. A quick little fun challenge. Bring your legs together, hands to the outer edges of your ankles. Make sure you're forward on your mat. Really look after yourself with this one. If you have tailbone issues, if your back doesn't feel good this morning, maybe you sit this one out if you've never done it. We're doing rolling like a ball, level one. Hands around, up onto the toes. Scoop your belly in, find that round spine. Look after your backs, start to roll back onto your mat. And then come all the way up, feet come down. Keep the round spine the whole way through. Keep even um, distance from your thighs to your chest. Two more. If you want a challenge, try and go toes rather than full foot on the ground. Tilt the pelvis, roll back off your sit bones. Roll up. Tap. Last one. And come all the way up. Nice. Cross the legs if that's okay, or come up onto your knees, whatever feels good. Forearms cross over each other. Rotate towards your right, just for a little spine twist, and rotate towards your left. Nice way just to open up the chest again, get the mid-back moving. Can't ever do enough mobility in your classes. Last one. Come back to the center, drop the hands, reach the legs out nice and long. They're nice and wide like a V, you just find the position that you can keep length. Bend your knees if you feel like you can't get out of this round back position. Otherwise, lengthen through the spine. Arms come out wide in your periphery. And then from here, turn to the right. Keep everything else grounded. Left arm is going to reach to the outer of my foot. So outer side of my foot. Right arm is going to reach up. I'm trying to get my nose to my shin. Lift back up in that rotation. Unrotate. Rotate towards your left. Reach outer side. Nose dive towards your shin. Lift all the way up. Nice for hamstring length. And again, rotation through the spine. 
rotating. This is called soar. And then dropping their head. It's a nice classical exercise of Joseph Pilates. Last one to the left. Reach, lower the chest towards the knee, and then come back up. And rotate. We're almost there, team. It's like a fast, fast class <laughs> to get it in 20 minutes. Feet are on the ground, so knees bent. Let's go backwards again to roll down so we can flip onto our other side. So it's kind of like a variation of our roller, but we're starting upright. Up nice and tall, tilt the pelvis. Rather than just stopping halfway, you'll know that when you do the course, we're going to continue to roll all the way down. Keep that belly slightly scooped. Feel the connection onto the mat from the lower back first. Keep your feet grounded. Go slow and controlled. Lying all the way down. Knees towards your chest. And then from here, take your feet on the ground. Do one more of our hip twist level two. So dropping your knees over to the side, arms are out wide. Over to the right side, look over your left shoulder. And then I'm going to have to spin around, but when you go towards your left side, I want you to turn all the way onto your left. So I'm going to spin around so I can see the screen. You guys can be wherever you are on your mats. You may need your support if you used it on the other side. So we should end up here with our left arm out long, right arm on top, and now we go into our arm openings. Right arm reaches to the ceiling. We're rotating all the way back. Look over your right shoulder if you can get the right shoulder down. I'm more flexible on the side, so my right shoulder finds that point. Come all the way back up. The other side, we also did the variation of our legs, and you might find that feels different on this side when you don't have your knee over the left um, knee. So when you did it on the other side, we had it like this, and you might find that actually really holds you into that position and isolates the movement. So if you prefer it like that, feel free. Last one. Maybe hold the stretch on this one. Take a breath into it. Like I said, you can change the breath pattern I find with this one because it depends on where you want that emphasis of movement and where you want that control and where you want them to feel it. Breathe into your rib cage and then gently bring the arm back over. So from here, we're going into our clam series, so our last little bit of a burn for our legs. You can take your arm out over overhead again or have your support. Right hand can be tented in front of you, knees are bent. Slight feeling of lift under your lower waist, feet together. From here, lift the top knee up. Let's go into our clams level one. We know what we're doing, so we don't need much introduction. Glute, top glute is working to lift and open that knee up. We talk a lot about in the course, our anatomy, our rotation of this hip joint. You learn the muscles so you know what area should be working when you're teaching them to your clients. You might not say it out loud, but you know. <laughs> And then it means that you can modify those exercises as much as you need to. If they aren't feeling it in the right spot or they need a little bit more. Three more. I'm no different to every other Pilates instructor who just has no idea how to count. Last one, hold at the top, feet lift, drop the knee down level two. Keeping that slight feeling of a lift. It's not about having a big gap underneath your lower waist. It's about that feeling of drawing slightly off to give that control through the pelvis so we don't just sink into the mat. Remember, there's that brick wall behind you, so we're rotating from the hip, not the whole pelvis. We've got two more. Last one. Hold at the top. Let's feel the burn there. Drop the bottom leg, straighten it out. Hook that top foot behind. Lower. Ah, sorry. Sorry, that was me. Find that nice control through the pelvis and the hip. Keep the knee bent, side kick, a, a modification of level one, draw your knee towards your chest, come back. As if you're sliding that leg across a tabletop. So we're just keeping the control from the hip to the foot. Again, does it feel different to the other side? The same, easy, what are you noticing? Hand can come to the pelvis if you just wanna feel how the pelvis is moving or to make it a little bit more challenging. Two more. Last one. Draw your knee towards your chest. 
hold there. Now we drop the foot behind the bottom knee, lower the knee down, allow the pelvis to roll forward slightly. Use your glute, lift up, lower down. Let's keep going here for eight. That's two. We've got three. Think about that glute doing the work. We're almost there. Last couple. Hold at the top. Pulses here for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and collapse back down. Beautiful work. Lie onto your backs. Let's do a little glute stretch. Let's start with the one we just worked. Right foot comes over your left knee. Push your right knee open. Feel that nice stretch. If you want more, hover the opposite knee towards your um, tabletop position. And bring your arms down by your sides. Slight little swap over. Left foot over. Find that variation if you want more. And then gently, when you're ready, bring that right foot back down, left foot uncrosses. From here, just how we started, take your hands to your rib cage, bring your awareness back into your breath. If closing the eyes is good for you, feel free to do so. If legs out nice and long to get length through the spine and take that little bit of moment to relax and melt into the floor, maybe you take the support out from under your head if you haven't already. And I want you to take three wholesome breaths in and out, silent, through the nose, into your ribs. Let the breath return to a natural rhythm. A nice body scan from the fingers, up the shoulders, down through the spine into the pelvis and into the feet. Let everything fall a little heavier. How grateful we are that we can move and use our bodies every day. It's always nice to take a moment of time for yourself to be present within your own body and your own breath. And gently open your eyes if they are closed. Maybe you draw your knees one more time back into your chest. And then if you need to roll to your side, then come all the way back up. And you are done. Well done. So hopefully it was, I felt like it was a little bit of a, there's so many things I wanted to add into your class this morning, but um, hopefully it didn't feel like it was too much of a class on steroids. We're just trying to get it out, but it's nice to get that dynamic flow. So you can see how all the repertoire we teach can go into a really nice, fun, dynamic class. So what I want to do now is just break down two exercises, just so you can see how we actually teach them on the course. And I think that's probably the part, like I said at the start, that sets us a little bit apart. And when you come onto the course, you learn the history of where APPI came from. And we really, I guess, paid respect back to Joseph Pilates, the creator of this incredible form of exercise. Um, and mindfulness, I think as well, it's a really great way to bring our awareness back into our bodies. Um, and where possible, we've used the exercises and broken them down to different levels so that you can use these exercises for any single person that comes into your Pilates studio, into your space. So the first exercise, I'm just going to show you kind of, I guess, one form of ex Oh, I'll go through it and then you'll know what I'm talking about. So the way that we teach it on the course is we if there's a Joseph Pilates classical exercise that it matches, we will show you that first. So you can understand why we break it down and why it may not be available for everyone. And then what we do is depending on the day of the course that we're on, we'll teach you the level that we're teaching that day. 
So what I'm going to do is we have a shoulder bridge, which it's a familiar exercise for you guys, probably in a lot of spaces of fitness. In shoulder bridge for Joseph Pilates, we do work more on articulation of the spine rather than just hamstrings and glutes. So it's just a form of a shoulder bridge. So Joseph Pilates had a couple of ways to do it, but one, I guess, um, advanced way to do it was where he lay on his back and he came up into a bridge and put his hands underneath his pelvis and then from here lifted the leg up, drew the leg all the way down and then pointed back towards the ceiling. So you can see if someone who doesn't have great spine mobility, never done Pilates before, may not be able to get to that level straight away. So then with the APPI, they created four levels of our shoulder bridge. Our level four being the hardest. We don't quite get to that same point with Joseph Pilates. It's not to say you can't eventually transfer into that when you're teaching out in like, I guess, the real world. But in the course, we teach you um, levels to progress to. Our shoulder bridge level four is our um, single leg variation, our hardest variation. So we find our bridge tilting the pelvis rolling up. We come up into our long spine. We send our thigh bones forward. We lift one leg towards the ceiling, pointing the toes, and then we flex and draw it down in line with the opposite um, side. And then we point and flex. So we continue to do that. We might come down in between. And then we go on to the other side. In your manuals that you'll receive, you get, we do three of these in a row. We come down in between and then we roll through the spine and we change sides. So that's your level four. So you can see the similarities from that to the Joseph Pilates variation. Our level two, we want to kind of pull it back a little bit. So we might, I'll actually show you level one because I think that will be a nice way to show you exactly how we get there because level four is still a single leg variation and not everyone can do that. So if you want to do a shoulder bridge that was a beginner level, we would keep both feet down. So all we do, we tilt the pelvis, we roll up through into our shoulder bridge, we send our thigh bones forward, and then we roll back down through the spine, one vertebrae at a time, that kind of saying, and then we come all the way down again. So shoulder bridge level one, is obviously a lot more of a beginner exercise. We were articulating through the spine. We're using our glutes. We're rolling up and down. And we're introducing that movement of spine mobility on your back. Then level four, as we jump to the levels, we start to bring in a single leg control work, which is obviously a lot more advanced. So you can see just from that, that we break down exercise rather than just giving you one big hard exercise and hoping that you can figure out how to modify it. The second exercise I want to show you is scissors. We did one in the class, but we've got five levels of scissors. It's a very um, classical exercise. If you Google Joseph Pilates scissors, it kind of comes up. You can see him doing it. Lots of people do it. It's a really kind of, I guess, like I say, traditional classic exercise. So it's a nice one to show you. But what I'm going to do is do a quick little advance through all the stages so you can see how we really break it down across the weekends. So our scissors exercise. Joseph Pilates, big movements, big breaths, big strong force exhales and strong, I guess, ranges. Again, not, uh, not necessarily available for everyone. So it's quite similar to our level five, but he's really up, he's really pulled in, and he's really quite vigorous movements. Our scissors level five is very similar with the double pulse. We keep that classical. We might not go to the same range, and we're a bit more mindful of our slower and our more silent breathing. So I'll go backwards. So our level five, we come up into our tabletop position. We take our hands to our sides. We slide our right leg up towards the ceiling and take hold of our um, thigh or our calf. We're in our abdo prep. At the same time, our other leg comes out nice and long. 
we sweep it two pulses with control and then we change. Pulse, 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 pulse. Quite similar, less vigorous, less, bit less range of motion. To break that down, if someone can't do that long lever or abdo prep, we do what we did similar in the class before. Our level four, we keep our legs bent. We take one leg to tabletop. We switch. So like scissors through the air, we're switching and we're doing two movements per breath. Level three, we just put a hold in there so that we can give you time to control, to get used to the reciprocal movement. So we switch through the air, we hold on our breath in, and then we switch. So it's a slower movement, there's a hold, there's time for control. Level two, both legs to tabletop. Sorry, one leg starts down, then we lift that leg up, and then we tap the foot down, almost like we're tapping into the pond, and then we come back up, like little toe taps. This starts to work on that hip movement, maintaining control, without having to think about the coordination of our reciprocal switches. So we just take it a little bit back to get you used to alternating toe taps, but not having to think about too much at once. And then our level one, we keep our legs on the ground. We slide our heel in towards your sit bone and you'll notice that we do that with all our um, scissors. I haven't kind of set you up in the right, um, in the perfect way because it takes a lot more time. We talk about it a lot more in detail, but there's a slide in towards your sit bone. You hover the leg up, you lower it down. Slide towards your sit bone. So the feet being in contact with the ground reduces the rec control required through the body. So slide and lift lower, and then slide and lift lower. So that's your level one. And we go, like I said, in great detail about the muscles being used, the control that's required, the aims of the exercise, what you're trying to achieve, what muscles you're trying to work, what the main focus is, so that you can talk to your clients about that so they know what they're doing. And then we give you these options of how to modify an exercise from the most beginner to the advanced. So you can give anyone that comes to your class an option as they need to. So you might find that you do short levers, like a bent knee versus a long lever, like a straight leg. It might be that you're adding one limb or two limbs. And so there's lots of ways that we challenge you or we build up the levels. So hopefully you can see that I've taken those exercises. I put it into a bit of a dynamic frame. You might have done that class and done some of those exercises before, but there's knowledge in the background of how I'm prepping my class to go from a shorter lever or a more um, beginner space and then building them up into more advanced to make it accessible for everyone. So I think that's it for me. Definitely happy. I'll say on as well after Sarah's done her little presentation um, to answer any questions, but hopefully that all felt good in your bodies. It was nice to move and um, with you all. And hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of what to expect on our course. Thank you so much, Riley. I did some of that class as well. So it was just so beautiful to move. And I hope you guys all enjoyed it. Um, you just feel so good in your body, don't you? Just moving and breathing. And yeah, thank you so much. That's absolutely wonderful. So yeah, hope you guys all got to participate. Um, there were a few questions that I answered throughout that session, but I will jump on once I go through just a bit of an overview of the course structure, I'll run through kind of those questions as well. So thank you so much, Riley. That was just beautiful. I love your teaching. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm just going to share my screen and we're just going to run you through a little bit of an overview of the course. Again, encourage you, if you have any questions that have kind of popped up throughout that session or if you've got any questions, hopefully I'm going to answer them now. But do feel free, again, just pop them in the chat and I'll be able to respond to everything. So I'm just going to share my screen. Beautiful. So to actually talk about the course, you've seen a class, you've seen a breakdown of the exercises, but now I'm going to just talk you through that course structure. So what's covered on the course, everything you need to know. So hopefully answering all those pressing questions for you. 
So just some course highlights. Um, we are the leading provider of Pilates teacher training in Australia, and we take such pride in that. Um, we love teaching every single student, and we have so many different formats available that I'll talk about um, in the next session. We are also KX Pilates' preferred Pilates teacher training provider. So they're an amazing company with studios all around Australia. So if you were looking to work somewhere like KX, this is a great course to complete to give you that kind of um, direct entry. And they love Unite Health Instructors. Riley mentioned at the start, we are internationally recognised. So you could take this anywhere. Um, APPI training is in 24 countries around the globe and is just growing. So it is, I think we said it quite a few times, but the reputation and quality of the training and then that instructors is just really well known within the industry. There are zero prerequisites to do this course. So we have students from all walks of life. We have people working in retail, corporate, nurses, pharmacists, um, teachers, students. So we really just want to emphasize there is no prerequisite to attend the course. The only prerequisite I would say is that you love Pilates. Um, and if you love Pilates, we will teach you everything you need to know. We do on the training, so we go through the full mat work and reformer repertoire. So you'll be fully equipped to teach both mat work Pilates and reformer Pilates in group settings, so large group fitness classes, small groups, and also one-on-one. -on -one. So it means you've got that nice diversity of where you could take it. So you could teach at reformer studios, you could start doing one-on-ones, you could set up mat work classes in the park. You basically can go everywhere with it. Um, we have the most phenomenal team of educators. So people like Riley, just the knowledge that you get passed on through this course. So we have physiotherapists and allied health professionals who always deliver that kind of anatomy side of the course, just to ensure we're teaching anatomy to the best level as possible. Um, and then we also have an amazing group of Pilates instructors who teach as well on the course, more of that kind of class teaching as well. So we have such a huge team, but all who are super, super passionate and just experts in their field. Um, we will make you 100% industry ready once you pass your exams. So the whole part, I will touch on the exams as well, but it's just to make sure that, that you are confident, competent and can walk straight out into a job. And you'll be able to teach students of all levels, beginners, advanced, intermediate. Um, we're going to teach you all you need to know on that. So the course structure... It is the course in itself is 14 days in training in total. And that is broken down into the first six days of the course is all your mat work and anatomy. So that is de delivered by an allied health professional. Um, we start each day with a beautiful mat work class. We'll do some lectures in the morning. And then the afternoon, you'll be diving straight into kind of your mat work repertoire. So you're going to start teaching on day one. You're going to learn some repertoire and you're going to start teaching each other. The next part of the course is our reformer training. So that's where we go through all our reformer repertoire. There's a lot more workshops on that part of the course. So class planning, um, small groups, using props, posture assessment, things like that. Um, so it really builds the whole course together. So that's your course hours. On top of that, what we get you to do is a certification logbook, and that's really your practice hours. So that's your at-home practice hours where you're self-practice, you're doing all your self-practice, you're going to classes, you're doing practice teaching, um, and then you're also doing some observation, and we provide all these online uh, classes so you can do your observation hours. And then you have a certification exam, and that is both a practical and theory, which I'll touch on in a little bit. So that's pretty much the bulk of the course. We do also have some pre-course lectures we get you to watch before you come to your first day. They're all on our online platform. And as soon as you enroll, you get access to all of those. So that is course structure, mat work, reformer and anatomy. And we teach you everything you need to know. So on every single day, you're going to do a beautiful Pilates class to kick off the day. And they're really just to ground you, set yourself into the scene um, we teach, what I really love about our training is we teach that anatomy on the course because anatomy is a beast. It's huge. You could do a degree in anatomy, but we really break it down to be specific to Pilates. So what you need to know, 
we use an anatomy app to assist with the learning, but our presenters really kind of use that anatomy to then teach it and break it down to the exercises. You learn the full repertoire in both network and a uh, reformer, so beginner, intermediate, and advanced, so you can take all those different levels. Um, we do lots of class planning. You learn how to deliver a one-on-one -on -one session. Um, as I mentioned before, lots of workshops, small group equipment. We do jump board on the course as well. That's covered. And then we talk about the business side as well. So if setting up an ABN, pay rates, um, we get an industry guest speaker that comes in on the last day of the course, which is always really exciting and is always a great Q&A session of how do I get a job? What are the pay rates out there? Um, how do I set up my own business if I want to go down that path? So we touch on all those elements. Um, we'll talk through the first aid, CPR, getting those, getting your insurance, things like that. So it really ties everything up really nicely. We have lots of different delivery options and we do always encourage if you're feeling, oh, I don't know what delivery option is best for me to book a time to chat with our amazing team at the office. But I'll talk you through kind of these delivery options. So we have our part-time model, which is available in every single state. And the part-time model is completed over about that five to seven month period. So you're doing one weekend a month each um, each month. Some months you might do two weekends. And that is doing the first three weekends online via Zoom. And that's all your mat work and anatomy. So you'll have someone like beautiful Riley um, taking you through kind of your anatomy, your mat work. Um, we do breakout groups. So we still keep it really interactive. You'll be breaking out with students and doing your practice sessions. And then we get to meet you face-to-face -face for weekend four. And that's where we dive into all the reformer Pilates teacher training. So we've got venues in each state we use. Um, and we will still also recap on the mat work there because if you're doing it on the online, we'll make sure we do cap recap on mat work on that reformer section um, and we dive into the reformer. So that is our part-time model, one to two weekends over a five to seven month period, super popular. The other option we do have just in Victoria only is a fast track three week intensive and that is all face-to-face. -face. So that is at our, we've got two studios in Melbourne where you'll be with us for 14 days. It usually run a Monday to Friday, Monday to Friday, Monday to Thursday. And we go through all of that. So you get your mat work anatomy face-to-face -face, and then all your reformer face-to-face. -face. Again, super popular. All options are popular. Um, we do have a really great version that we introduced probably last year. And it's a bit of a combo of those two that we do offer in Victoria and New South Wales, which is doing really, really well. So it allows you to do your first three weekends online via Zoom. So all your mat work and anatomy. So you'll do that over three months. And then you come and do an eight-day intensive, which is just all your reformer. So that's a really nice kind of mix of the both, um, especially with work commitments, family commitments. This is a really nice kind of hybrid version that allows you to get that face-to-face -face component um, but not have to take three weeks off work. We do have... Um, which we've run in winter months as well, which is always a nice popular one. We do have a, a combination of that, which is doing some evening sessions as well. So doing your mat work and anatomy just in the evenings um, works really well kind of if you're working full time, um, doing Tuesday and Thursdays in the evening and then doing that eight day in person, either your intensive or your weekends. And of course, we do do 100% online. So if you can't get to us, we do have that offer. It is 100% pre-recorded. Beautiful Riley is in a lot of the videos. Um, and that's just a, a work through at your own pace. It is all full recorded. But to ensure that people get that attention um, they need, we do offer mentoring sessions as part of that 100% online. Um, so when people do take that module, you get quite a few mentoring one-on-one -on -one sessions on Zoom so you can run through any questions you have with an educator. So lots of different options, um, but we really do want to make sure we can find something to suit everyone's lifestyles, um, flexibility and things like that. So we do have certifications as part of the APPI Pilates Instructor Certification. It is all included in that course fee and we have two components to it. So we do have a theory exam and then also a practical exam. 
So the theory exam is a 60 minute open book, multiple choice paper that is completed at home. And you do this, we say a minimum of two weeks after finishing the course. So you can do all your practice hours and things like that. Um, and then you have a Pilates practical exam. So as part of your Pilates practical exam, you're going to design and deliver a 50 minute program in Mat Work and Reformer that you're going to teach to someone. So it might be a student on the course that you teach it to. We have lots of people pair up or it might be a family member or a friend, um, anyone that wants to be your Pilates kind of practice person, which they usually love because they get some free Pilates. And then just to ensure that you've really gone through the program, you've studied the Pilates, we do spot check um, to mat work and to reformer exercises that aren't in your program. And that just is to assure that you've done that practice. You're really competent with the repertoire. So once you do those, you do them 48 hours either side of each other, you are certified with us. You are free to go out and teach. You just need to get insurance, which um, you need your first aid and your CPR, which we talk about on the course. But your new career awaits after you complete this. Um, and on average, we would say people usually do it about two to three months after they finish their, their course. Would you say, Riley, that's probably you're finding students are doing their exams about two to three months after? Yeah, just because of the um, spot checks, you just need a bit of time to get familiar with all the repertoire. So we find that you're better prepared by the time you get to about that two to three month mark. You just feel like you kind of, it's really ingrained in you by that stage. Oh, amazing. Um, I am conscious of time, guys, and I'm just going to try to wrap it up just quickly. But I just wanted to let you know we do have our winter hype sale on right now. So huge, huge saving. If you're looking for the sign, this is it. We want you to get going. It's $1,900 off the course, which is huge. So the Pilates Instructor Certification is Four four nine five. It is for a limited time only. Um, that is our upfront fee. We do also have a two part payment plan, which is four nine nine five as well. So we will make sure we pop you an email straight after this or in the next couple of hours, just with those details. But it's a really great. It is our only like our biggest offer of the year. Um, so if you are keen. This is the side, do it. You're not going to regret it. Um, it is the most wonderful journey. And my biggest mission is it for it to be the best course you ever do, not only change your life, but to be the best learning experience you've ever had. So we hope we, you join us. Um, thank you all so much for your time today. I'm just going to stop, um, stop sharing. There is just one question I didn't get to answer. Um, no, it was just a thank you. So thank you guys all so much. We really, really appreciate you giving up your time. As I mentioned, we'll pop an email out to you. And a huge thank you to Riley. I um, just adore you. You're amazing. Um, you embody everything we want at Unite Health and we are so appreciative. So hopefully, guys, we get to see you all on a course with us soon. Thank you all so much for your time this morning. Bye, everyone. Bye.